the moonlight just like we used to do i'm always walking after midnight and searching for you i walk for miles along the highway well that's just my way of saying i love you i'm always walking after midnight and searching for you I was in the Boy Scouts and the Scoutmaster, he heard me whistling and he said, if you can whistle songs like that, he said, you can play harmonica. That's good. And he asked me about getting the band again, I said, yeah, but what? And then and he asked me, well, he said, what are you going to call the band? And she said, the Merle Rambis said, Rambo, what do you think? I said, we'll call it the Carl County Rambis. It's a good band. He's still got the band going today, Carl County Rambis. Yeah. Where, where else have you played? Well, I played at uh, different places, uh, Moose Hall, American Reed, and all in places. I played in all in different places like that. You know? uh, can you name some people, you other musicians you've played with? Oh, yeah. George, George, George Young. played with George Young. Johnny Wagner. Johnny Wagner. Yeah, I played with him. <laughs> Marty White. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Joy Smith. Yeah, yeah I played with him too, yeah. Yeah, I played with a good many people over the country, you know. You know. Yeah, I played for March of Dimes too. He you know, was a Libra Holly too. I mean, he was out there. Then we played out there at Tailsville Dance Hall. We played on the other side of Tailsville. We played in that dance hall too, I think. We had everything going, you know. So we played at the Westminster Army. And Met, when did you guys meet Bob Hartless? Should we really take it? <laughs> oh, about 40 years, probably. <laughs> probably around 40 years. Every bit of it. Yeah. And he used to sit in, he, uh, Bob Hartless would sit in with Paul Wagner, do a little bit of banjo and lead guitar work and stuff like that. And I would fill in and do a little bass. Now, Martin, where, where'd you play uh, in your lifetime around here? Around Westminster. The first job I had was like Fairfield Lamb Bets. We played at Phil's Tavern. We played at the Littlestown Eagles. Gettysburg Eagles it was the first band. Mary Mott's George Gunther. Oh. Yeah. And then the Country Classics, which was together like 15 years. Then uh, Nashville Review. And then filled in with, like, with him, like with um, Paul Wagner, with Bob Hartless and Paul Wagner. Bobby Gotze, them guys, and the Roy Reaver, and um, Don Forsyth, Larry, what's Larry's last name? Yeah. <laughs> Larry the drummer.
this part we're playing here today. <laughs> and, and over here, over here on the right is Greg, Gary Bookter, and his mom to the right. It's her fault. He's playing banjo. See, they started out with <laughs> banjo and guitar, and with dad playing around the house, and his dad playing a little bit of guitar, and he would play the accordion, the mandolin, and the uh, guitar. I would watch him play the, the, the uh, music because he used to play with the Carroll County Rammers and uh, Johnny Wagner, a couple other bands. And then, uh, so I just watched him when I was like 10 years old. I said, oh, dear Lord, let me learn that Wild Wood Flower song. So when he went away grocery shopping, I'd get the guitar out and memorize how it was in the case. And I said, it was something like this. And I said, oh, geez, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I've watched it. <laughs> so then that's how it started. And then we started playing. Your pretty fingers Just don't love you anymore. To live our lives would be a sin. So, darling, let me go. Release me, my darling. Let me see you. 
That's pretty. Now, how old did you say you were? 39. All right. <laughs> and, and not a day old. <laughs> What's your name? Bertha. Happy birthday. I call Thank it you. weakness. <laughs> Thank goodness. I got mine. Charlie Stewart, Clyde Stewart, Pappy, whatever you want to call me. Hey, you don't matter. This is my brother Kenny. Uh, he lives up here in La Silver Run. I live in P Pennsylvania, up near Chambersburg. We're just a couple old country boys out of West Virginia. We like to pick and grin, make noise, do whatever. Now, y'all join right in with us. Hope we can make it back. Take this job, best of it. I ain't a working here no more. A woman done left. She took all the reason that I was a working for. You better not try to stand in my way cause I'm walking out the door. Take this job and shove it. I ain't a working here no more. Well, I been working in this factory And I owned it 15 years All this time I watched my woman Counting in the pool of tears I seen a lot of good folk out Who had a lot of bills to pay Give a shirt right off of my back if I had the nerve to say. Take this job and shovel. I ain't a working here no more. Woman I left, it took all the reason that I was working for. You better not try. Just stand in my way Cause I'm walking out the door Take this job and 
chubby. I ain't a working man. Don't you play me no random man. Pack over in my head. Don't you know I love to get drunk and hear country sound. Your nearness makes me tremble with desire. I wonder which one of us is to blame. Somehow I can't blame myself, although I guess I should. And I can't put the blame on you.
I mean, I love her for that. Tennessee, I was on stage playing with the Marble Man, they called him. And, uh, the one below, the picture below. That's his guitar player playing up, uh, playing rhythm behind me. And the one below is Jim Taylor and Audrey, my ex-wife, and Rod, no Rod, he fooled them little fast cars, goes all over the, all over the world, or the uh, United States. Mm -hmm. And that's me on the old Chet Atkins Gretcher I bought in 1956 when I was 20 years old. Uh -huh. I was taking it to American Legion uh, here in, I think, Westminster, I think. If we don't forget the words, we forget the title. Anyway, it's a George Jones song. Harry does a real good job of it, but he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> He said, I'll love you till I die. She told him, you'll forget time. As the years went slowly by, she still preyed upon his mind. Kept her picture on his wall. Went half crazy now and then. He still loved her through it all. Hoping she'd come back again. He stopped loving her today. They placed a wreath upon his door. Soon they'll carry him away. He stopped loving her today. Kept some letters by his bed. Dated 1962. He had hundred lines. Every single I love you Went to see him just today Oh, but I didn't see no tears All dressed up to go away First time I'd see him smiling here she would and that kept running through my mind this time he's over her for good he stopped loving her today they placed a wreath upon his door soon they'll 
carry him away. He stopped loving her today. Put your sweet lips a little closer to the phone. Let's pretend we're together all alone. Tell your friend they're with you, you'll have to go. Whisper to me, tell me, do you love me true? Or is he holding you the way I do? your mind I've got to know Should I hang up or will you tell him you'll have to go L.C. would always get paid and he paid me, paid uh -huh. me. like I'd go in and play with him at, at the tavern there. I mean I would get $50 uh -huh. for that night Oh yeah. just sitting there picking the lead guitar behind And that him. was back in when? About? Oh it was I love her still, and I guess that it shows. Walking away, there she goes. Now if I He recently died then, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he just died. Just, now, uh, 
How old were you in 1951? Me? Yeah. I was probably 15 years old, somewhere uh -huh. around there. Uh -huh. So, and how old are you now? I'll be, be I'm 73. I'll Where did they live? They lived in Essex, Maryland. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, so you you played too with both of them? Oh yeah. And her husband her husband's name is uh, Dan. Dan. Dan Poland. And Dan wanted to be a cowboy when he was younger. He came out of New York, and she came from up in New New England states. Uh huh. And she could really yodel when she was younger. Oh really? And she was a good singer. Yeah. And Dan, he sang the, a lot of the old Western songs. And uh, he's, he's quite a character, too. He knows a lot of songs. Never see him singing off a book. Is that right? Never, he's like L.C. Smith, all out of the head. Huh. L.C. had to memorize his tunes because he couldn't read. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. But he memorized the words. He knew them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You could cut the lights out on L.C. and he could keep burning on. <laughs> he was an old. He came out of Colorado. Uh -huh. He was an old rodeo rider. He rode in there in them rodeos, riding them horses and them bulls. He said that, he told us one time that's why he didn't have no sense now. <laughs> but he was a good singer, had a great voice. He was over in Randallstown, and he helped build that Bay Bridge. He was an iron worker. Oh, okay. yeah. And he was a great person, too. Had a personality, just a nice personality. Mm -hmm. Easy fellow to get along with. Travel with them anywhere uh, out of Carroll County at all? I mean, did you? Uh, not too much, no. Uh -huh. no. They were mostly local people. Mostly you know, local. Uh -huh. and, uh, I know people was on the road, the professionals traveling on the road, and we were playing local here, making, making as much money as they were. As they were. As the workers working for the star, you know, yeah. I, and uh, and we were home every night. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, the, 
the way they had to live, they were living out of a suitcase. Yeah. But we were home every night. And you got paid. And we got as much money as, they, as them workers did. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes more. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I played uh, with uh, Gary Weaver. I used to play on Hanover Radio Station up in Hanover, mm -hmm. WHVR, <clears throat> back in the early 60s. Played up there on, on that with him. And uh, there was a guy who lived in uh, Manchester, Joe Mills, played a good fiddle. He worked with another group there, but he worked at Black & Decker, where I used to work. And uh, he took and uh, he was, we were down in the restroom, and he was there washing his hands. He said, I'd like to hear this guy play this guitar over, it comes on every Saturday on Hanover Radio Station. And one of the guys, we were listening to him, one of the guys said, Joe, would you like to meet that guy? And Joe kind of, he was washing his hands, he kind of looked around at him. And he said, there he stands right there along the wall. And he, he looked me over from head to toe. He went up. <laughs> he, that's how, how I knew, learned to know him. <laughs> but I, uh, I worked with Gary Weaver. We, we played up in the Hagerstown behind Pierce. Played right on stage with Webb Pierce's backup band. And Max Powell, the guy who wrote all the songs for, for Webb Pierce. I played on with when I was playing with Don Wood. Played in Frederick Armory uh, on the Will and Jennings show, and uh, and also in Hagerstown we played. Uh, uh, Melvin Montgomery was on on that show up there with Webb Pierce. The same th thing mm -hmm. at the same time. I was in the Free State uh, Theater up there where that was at. That was back in the uh, in the early 70s. And when I was working with Gene Hoyt, we, we opened Valley View Park up down in Helen, Pennsylvania one year. Mm -hmm. About four or five different bands. Mm -hmm. And we were one of the bands that, that opened that up. Uh -huh. We reopened the park again. Valley, or, uh, 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 Valley View Park, it was called. Mm -hmm. It was in Helen, Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. That's up above... Uh, York, Lancaster, up in that way. I see. I see. I've worked different places, though. One time I, I filled in for uh, with a group up there, I played up there at that outdoor world up in that part of the country. Oh. Nice place up there. No. Well, Jim and I was good friends. We, uh, we played a lot of music together. And uh, he had his own band called the Nighthawks. We worked with Paul Wagner's band, and he would fill in bass playing with different different groups around. He lived up the road here at Manchester, Maryland, uh, which is only like five or six miles from here where yeah. I live. Mm -hmm. He had a repair shop. He he, and, uh, he, he also taught taught music. <clears throat> he, he was he was into a lot of that kind of stuff yeah. over around with it, you know. And he, he was a shooter too. He shot. Tournaments and stuff, you know, shotgun, pistol. The guitar up there, did he? Yeah, guitar. He had a big guitar on, the, on his mailbox. On his mailbox, yeah. yeah. Did he? Uh, did he teach other people to do certain things with the making, working on guitars? Or? He, he had one guy that, that come in there. His name's Steve. Something. He he was there with him until he died. He was there for the last three years. Uh huh. Slim car. Slim car. Yeah, they called him Slim. Slim, yeah. <laughs> And he's he's no longer with us either, then, right? Yeah, he was originated out of Virginia too. Uh -huh. And did he live in Carroll County? He or? lived over on uh, Cage Mill Road, right there, close to 26. He used to go down there and play at his house and play with him. He had a uh -huh. nice big uh, D35 Martin uh -huh. flat top. Oh yeah. And I'd see him at the festivals and stuff over uh -huh. in the Arcadia and places like that. Uh -huh. Did you play? Uh, did you play at any of the festivals here, like the 4-H fair here or anything like that? I played over there one time with, uh, I don't remember who I was playing with. But we played at that, that, uh, 4-H festival there in Westminster. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he, so he played a flat top and the regular guitar then, huh? Yeah, it's just a straight guitar. Uh -huh. And that's a, a rich White Falcon uh, stereo guitar that I was playing there. 
think it's about 1982. It's a couple hundred dollar jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't have them gone down on the farm. I had to get them after I come off the farm. <laughs> All the groups that I played with, we'd, we'd play for private parties and mm -hmm. stuff, you know. This uh, flat top I got in uh, Tampa, Florida in uh, 1966, I got that guitar. This picture was taken in the early 70s here. It's a custom-made flat top. Somebody down in, I think, North Carolina probably made it for a TV star that used to have that guitar. But I don't know who he was, but I've had it since 1966. To me, when I had a full head, I had Chuck Hurd. I hope made that shirt I got on. Down below is... This is my uncle, Bill Scott, and this is me. That's a country, Chet Atkins Country Gentleman guitar there. I bought that in the late 60s. Mm -hmm. I no longer have that guitar, but, uh, but I sold it at... at uh, I still have two other Chet guitars. Mm -hmm. And that's this is a Gibson Birdland that uh, my uncle had there. He influenced me a lot mm -hmm. with my playing. He he was pretty pretty sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Gene Horick here, the group and uh, my ex-wife. She sung, uh, sang a lot too then. Uh, oh yeah, she was a good singer like Terry, that girl that uh -huh. sang, sang the other day. And you're standing there? And she could play chords. I mean, I could play anything. I didn't have to babysat her. Oh, yeah. Never, you, when you can play with people and relax it, and, and she uh -huh. knew that neck. Uh -huh. and this was Jack Dalgreen. Uh, he was just standing behind a little snare drum here, but he had the full set for the picture. Jack was over the Westminster High School, the plumbing, oh. when they put that high school in out there. Oh. He was the top dog on that. Well, up to now, everything was all right till I tried to pull it all together one night. That's when I noticed there was something definitely wrong. Now the transmission was a 53. The engine turned out to be a 73. When I tried to put in the bolts, the whole was and all How long wrong. you been playing? Oh, 110 years. <laughs> Ever since I was about 10 years old, off and on. Is that right? Do you, do you do other gigs around Westminster? Or? We go to Senior Center in uh, Greenbound. But I used to go around different bands and play with them, but I, I've, I've done it for quite a while. Uh huh. Cut that out. <laughs> it's self talk. Self talk. And you can tell that. Oh, I, don't know about, I don't know about that. And can I ask how old you are? Hey, pardon? Can I ask your age? Well, if you, if you have to. Uh, <laughs> How old are you? Uh, 85. Oh, that's wonderful. That's absolutely. It is? Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, I'm glad. I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> it's pretty bad sometimes. My name is Charlie Stem. And where do you, you live in Westminster? I live in Westminster. Uh -huh. Well, I've been along the butt ever since I was about 11 or 12, I guess. Uh -huh. And did your folks play any? My father played. Uh -huh. I learned from my father. And then what? He taught me all he knew, then I took lessons for about four years. Oh, yeah. And did you play around here or travel I far? I right here, best part of my life. Right around here? Well, Frederick, uh -huh. Pennsylvania, mostly all around, around yeah. Maryland. Yeah. Now, you had, clubs. now, you had another career as a businessman, didn't you? I, I, uh, I operated and owned, owned Stems Printing in Westminster. Right, that's on... Uh, Most of the clubs up on Main Street. Like Legions, VFWs. Uh-huh. And places like that, Eagles, yeah. Yeah. the Moose, the Moose, oh yeah, I didn't forget the Moose. <laughs> and, and how old are you? 82. Wonderful, that's great.
Yeah. Uh, do you play yet, or do you just like? Yeah, I play uh, play in nursing homes and um, senior centers and everything. Is that right? I'm playing uh, 25 times this month, 25, 25 different places. Wow. Yeah. I did one already this morning. Did you really? Wow. Where was that? Country Companions, out off of Stone Road, okay. down in Baltimore, Baltimore, around Dundalk area. And uh, then I moved back here in my parents' old place on the Hook Road uh, about 10 years ago. Come back to my old roots back here. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Okay. jokes on me. I got one to tell on. I guess I'll do it on Charlie Stan back there. Thank you. He, he went to the doctor a couple weeks ago and had his checkup and, uh, and uh, the doctor told him what he should do and what he shouldn't do. And about two weeks later, he's walking down the street here in Westminster and the doctor looked across the street. Charlie's bopping down the street there with a 21 year old girl on his arm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Doctor said, Charlie, what in the world are you doing? He said, I'm doing just what you said to do. You said to get a hot mama and be cheerful. <laughs> the doctor said, Charlie, you misunderstood me. I said, you got a heart murmur. Be careful. <laughs> You're a man. My wife saw this Josh Turner on television. She fell in love all over again. <laughs>
this world alone I know you have fun at my farewell party I know you'll be glad when I'm gone Don't be mad at me for wanting to keep you till my life on this old world is through. I'll be free at the end of my farewell party, but I made that shirt I got on. Mm -hmm. That's uh, in the Civil War style. I saw her with this when she told him that he should go to school. He sneak away in the afternoon, take a little walk, and pretty soon he find them at the local lodging bar. He stand and listen carefully, then pretty soon he began to see how the auctioneer could talk to him rapidly. This guy, Bob, he went to this revival meeting. He went in there and he told the preacher, he says, I gotta have some help. I need some prayer for my hearing. So he got up there and he, the, the reverend put his fingers in the guy's ear and he prayed and prayed and prayed. And he kept praying. After a while, he says, How's your hearing now? He said, Well, it don't come up till next Tuesday. Gene Autry go riding across the big screen. The man in the white cowboy hat is a hero to me. He was and he is now, I guess he always will be. Time takes away many things, but it can't take a dream. See Gene Autry go riding across the big screen. You wouldn't read my letter if I wrote you. You asked me not to call you on the phone. But there's some
places where the wine and liquor flow, where you wait to be anybody's baby, and for